Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Wilson Tsai. I'm a board certified cardiothoracic surgeon who specializes in esophageal diseases. Today I'd like to talk to everyone about heartburn or what we commonly know as gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now heartburn is essentially a symptom of gastroesophageal reflux disease. So for example, if a patient has lung cancer, one of the symptoms that patient may present with is cough. Uh, unfortunately, with reflux disease, many people are treated simply for symptom relief. So what I mean by that, for example, if a patient goes to see a physician for heartburn, one of the very first things that happens is essentially they get medications to treat their heartburn. Now these medications that we know as proton pump inhibitors or antacids, they're actually very effective in treating the actual symptom of gastroesophageal reflux disease, but in many times, in many situations, the proper workup is not initiated where we could potentially be missing significant dangerous complications of heartburn and reflux. So let me draw a little pictorial in terms of what reflux is and how things may cause heartburn and reflux, and then I'd like to describe the actual workup in terms of what I recommend for patients with this. So when a patient has reflux, what happens usually is that the contents from the stomach essentially go up and injure the esophagus. Now there may be many causes of why this happens. The most common cause in this country is actually from a hiatal hernia. What a hiatal hernia is, is essentially a hole that develops wider in your diaphragm. And as this hole spreads apart, the stomach is pushed up into the chest cavity. So patients actually look like this now. And in that situation, what happens is that the physiology or the anatomy of the lower esophageal sphincter is disrupted, thereby people get active regurgitation of contents up into their esophagus. Now, as we know, the lumen of the stomach is actually acidic, meaning that the acid is required to break the food down. So what happens is that when the acid goes up, and bathes the esophagus, then people get that characteristic feeling of heartburn, which many patients medicate themselves for, or many physicians medicate them for. Now, it is not, it's not wrong to medicate patients for the symptoms of heartburn. In fact, most of the time when people have heartburn, you know, taking medications such as omeprazole or Prilosec, uh, you know, for, for two weeks or to a month is actually okay. But however, if patients continue to feel symptoms, after they stop those medications, I do recommend working up patients for these symptoms. Because what that's telling you is that something is probably going to be more of a chronic problem, at which time I do recommend figuring out why you have this reflux. The most important reason why people need to have a workup for the reflux is of course, we know that reflux can cause esophageal cancer. Now, I'm not saying that everyone with reflux is going to develop esophageal cancer, but we know that reflux occurs in about 30% of patients in the United States. And out of those 30%, anywhere from 10% or 15% of patients may develop chronic changes of reflux that we call Barrett's esophagus. Now, Barrett's esophagus is, is essentially a precancerous form of esophageal cancer. Now, I'm not saying people with Barrett's esophagus are all going to develop esophageal cancer. What that's letting you know is that the reflux is bad enough that it's causing a higher risk for developing it. Uh, and that's the most uh, important reason why I think that patients should at least get an endoscopy to figure out whether or not Barrett's esophagus is present in them. And therefore, if it is, then we recommend certain treatments for that. Um, the second reason why I recommend re workup for patients with reflux is because reflux is not only heartburn. Many patients with reflux can actually present with chronic coughing, voice changes, uh, esophageal ulcers, esophageal strictures, dysfunctions of the esophagus causing food to get stuck. These are all other things that can happen with chronic reflux and regurgitation that's not identified or worked up properly. Now, if you take a look <laughs> at the anatomy here. In a person with heartburn and reflux that is not um, uh, relenting within a month after medical treatment, I recommend first an endoscopy. Uh, 
What an endoscopy is, is basically passing a flexible camera while the patient is uh, sedated, or in some patients, uh, they may be uh, uh, given anesthetics. We take a flexible camera and pass it down the esophagus to take a look to see if there's any changes of the, ref that, uh, of the, uh, the esophagus because of reflux. What we look for is, for example, esophagitis. We look for stricture formation. And of course, we look for things like Barrett's esophagus, at which, time, which I'll describe a little bit later. We take the proper biopsies of the esophagus. We take the proper biopsies of the stomach. And we take a look down the intestines to make sure there's no other ulcerations that form there. At the same time, I recommend taking a look at the anatomy of the patient's gastroesophageal junction to see if there's, for example, a hide or hernia. We also make sure that there's no evidence of any strictures of the esophagus, which is scar tissue that forms at the esophagus, which can prevent food from going down. We also want to look at the stomach to see if there's any suggestion that the stomach may not be working very well, or uh, what we call gastroparetic. And these are all things that we're looking for for the endoscopy. Based upon the endoscopy, patients may or may not require other tests to figure out the cause of their reflux. Other tests may include an esophageal manometry. What an esophageal manometry test is, is basically a way to test the pressures or the driving forces of the esophagus. Now what we do is we numb up a patient's nose, we numb up the patient's mouth, and we pass this very flexible camera, uh, very flexible catheter down the patient's esophagus, and this catheter has certain pressure recordings along the entire length of it, and we ask the patient to swallow 10 times. And the reason why we ask them to swallow 10 times is because these sensors can now evaluate the coordination of the swallowing mechanism of the esophagus, as well as the pressures of the esophagus to see whether or not the esophagus is functioning correctly. In some patients, they may require things like a pH study. A pH study is basically, again, another catheter-based study where we pass a catheter, again, in the esophagus, and we allow a patient's recording, uh, we record, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we allow this catheter to be remaining in the patient's esophagus for anywhere from 24 hours to 48 hours, where we see the amount of regurgitation that occurs where this sensor would pick it up, and that would, again, confirm a diagnosis of acid regurgitation or acid reflux. Now, these are the initial sort of screening tests and workup I, I recommend for patients with chronic reflux that is not treatable with medication or chronic reflux that happens leading to certain complications as we described before. Now, I would like to talk a little bit about Barrett's esophagus. And the reason why Barrett's esophagus is so important is because of the fact that Barrett's esophagus is an indicator of potential cancer risk. So, if a patient is diagnosed with Barrett's esophagus, the most important thing to do is to grade or characterize the Barrett's esophagus. And that Barrett's esophagus is graded into two major forms. One that we call metaplasia, and one that we call dysplasia. So what this is, what Barrett's esophagus is, is your body's natural reaction of trying to change its cells to protect itself from the heartburn and reflux that happens. So what happens is that the cells of the esophagus try to make itself or convert itself to look like the stomach or the, or the cells of the intestines. And in doing that, it may potentially cause cancer. So metaplasia is actually a lower form of risk. In fact, it's actually a very low risk when a patient has Barrett's metaplasia. Again, how high? The risk of developing esophageal cancer, if you have metaplasia, is extremely, extremely low. Anywhere from 0.1% to 0.2% per year of developing esophageal cancer. So that's extremely low. So again, if someone has metaplasia, I say, well, listen, you know, this is what your risk is. However, it does warrant further workup to see if there's potential reasons 
to fix the reflux to prevent the uh, progression of the bar to get worse. If a patient has dysplasia, then it's very important to characterize this dysplasia as two forms, one that we call low grade and one that we call high grade. So low grade Barrett's dysplasia is actually, again, has a very significant risk of developing esophageal cancer, but again, it's not a massive amount. When a patient has low grade dysplasia, we recommend treatments to eradicate that Barrett's esophagus. One of the potential treatments we talk about is radiofrequency ablation. What radiofrequency ablation is, it's a, uh, a, a, a procedure at which we pass a balloon or a paddle down the esophagus and this balloon has microwave um, uh, coils around it at which time these uh, microwaves would activate and burn away the first layer of the esophagus where these potentially precancer cells are hiding or, or, or resting. And this is what I recommend in patients with low-grade dysplasia. Uh, in a patient with metaplasia, however, what I do is I characterize patients with metaplasia as short segment or long segment Barrett's esophagus. Those patients with short segment Barrett's esophagus, <laughs> I recommend surveillance, where a patient gets an endoscopy every three years to make sure that the Barrett's esophagus does not get worse. In patients with long segment Barrett's esophagus, they essentially have two treatments I recommend. Continued surveillance, and some patients may be candidates for that microwave ablation therapy that we talk about, radiofrequency ablation. However, if a patient has high-grade Barrett's dysplasia, then I definitely recommend a very serious look and, uh, and the identification of a cancer risk. There are certain studies that show that patients with high-grade dysplasia, up to 30% of patients can have an esophageal cancer hiding somewhere along the length of their esophagus. And so anyone with high-grade Barrett's dysplasia, that is when the true warning signs should be going off. And I treat these patients very seriously to identify and make sure we are not missing a cancer there. So in summary, I'd like to again stress the importance of a workup for a patient with chronic reflux because of these risk factors. If a patient has reflux, again, I don't think it's wrong to treat these patients for a symptom relief with medications. So you identify the patient with reflux, medical treatment, anywhere from two weeks to four weeks, I think is warranted. Because again, anyone, you know, again, everyone in the population can have reflux at one time or another in their life. What I recommend though is not to stay on these medications for that long because we do know that these medications could potentially have significant side effects. Those side effects include decreased gallbladder motility, potential osteoporosis, increased risk of hip fractures, even possibly renal failure. If after these med these, uh, uh, this course of medical treatment, <clears throat> if there is persistence of symptoms, then I work recommend the workup. The initial workup should be any evaluation of the anatomy through endoscopy. Or another test which I haven't mentioned before is an esophagram. What an esophagram is is essentially a, a x-ray at which they take a picture of the esophagus while patients are studying or, or patients are drinking contrast to identify the contours of the esophagus in the stomach. Based upon these studies, if a hiatal hernia is identified, if certain complications of reflux are identified, such as esophageal ulcers, esophageal strictures, Barrett's esophagus, um, gastroparesis, then we recommend further workup with an esophageal manometry. And in some patients, a pH study. I think this is the most thorough way to identify patients for the risk factors and I do recommend that patients with chronic reflux not stay on medication for many years because of the possible complications that we all know are associated with reflux. I thank everyone for their time. Have a good day.